Hello, friends and neighbors. It's September 1st, so I should be saying hello, friends, neighbors, and fellow Vedsies. That's right, it is time for another year of Veds. Vlog every day in September, which is fairly self-explanatory, but I'm actually going to explain it more in another video, probably tomorrow, because today, September 1st, is also another important day. Because today in the United Kingdom, hundreds of wizards and witches are gathering at Platform 9 and 3 quarters to take the Hogwarts Express to another fun-filled year at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. If you believe such things. However, for those of us who unfortunately live in the muggle world, it is an opportunity for us to talk a little bit more about Harry Potter. Last year, 2017, was a big milestone year for the Harry Potter series. In addition to being the 20-year anniversary of the publication of the first book and the 10-year anniversary of the publication of the last book, 2017 is also the year in which the infamous Harry Potter epilogue takes place. The final battle between Harry Potter and Voldemort took place in May of 1998. The epilogue takes place 19 years later, which puts it in September of 2017. And of course, being who I am, I missed all of those important milestones and didn't talk about Harry Potter at all last year, but I'm going to talk about it this year, and this year is kind of an important milestone in the Harry Potter universe as well. 2018, at least within the Harry Potter universe, is the 20-year anniversary of the final battle of Hogwarts, the fall of Lord Voldemort. But this will also be the first September the 1st after that epilogue. It'll be the first time the Hogwarts Express is leaving Platform 9 and 3 quarters after the official end of the Harry Potter story. And in a way, we're kind of living in an era of the Harry Potter fandom beyond the epilogue, not just because we are within the Harry Potter universe beyond the story, but also because the Harry Potter fandom has kind of gone into a resurgence. If you look at the 21-year-long history of the Harry Potter fandom, you can basically divide it up into five distinct eras. First, from 1997, the publication of the first Harry Potter book, to around about 1999-2000 is that first era of the Harry Potter fandom, back when Harry Potter wasn't quite the international phenomenon that it became, but it was still a pretty popular children's book series. The first three books were published at that time, people read them, they liked them, it was popular in the UK and in the US, and people were really into it. But just because a lot of people like something doesn't mean that it's going to have any kind of lasting power. It could have been just a temporary fad. And indeed, when that fourth book came out, a lot of people thought that maybe the fad would be over because Goblet of Fire was a little bit of a departure from what had come before. The second era began around about the turn of the century when three different things kind of took place at the same time. First, of course, was the publication of that fourth book, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, where the series took a much darker turn, and it was also the first time that the book was released simultaneously in both the UK and the US, which was kind of a big deal. Second, that was also about the time that the first Harry Potter movie came out, which proved to be very popular. And finally, right around this time was when the internet was really coming into its own as a big mode of communication and connection. And this gave Harry Potter fans the opportunity to talk with other Harry Potter fans about Harry Potter at a time when there was a lot to talk about. The result being that the years between the release of Goblet of Fire and the release of the final book, Deathly Hallows, in 2007, were rife with anticipation. Between the releases of each of those books, which were events in and of themselves, there was a lot of speculation and a lot of people just wondering what was going to happen in the next book. So Harry Potter had gone from becoming just another popular children's book series to an obsession for a lot of people. It was during this time period that sites like The Leaky Cauldron and MuggleNet became very, very popular. Unofficial guides to the Harry Potter series were published, analyzing the first four books and speculating on what would happen in the rest of the series. And this obsession also gave rise to a new genre of music, Wizard Rock. And then, of course, the last book was published, everybody read it, and we entered into the third era of the Harry Potter fandom, where people almost kind of didn't know what to do with themselves. Back in 2010, in the midst of this period, I made a video entitled Why the Harry Potter Epilogue Isn't Crap, or something along those lines, and it's actually the very first Veds video I ever made. But in it, I talk extensively about the Harry Potter Epilogue, and why I, at least, thought it was pretty good, even though it seemed like a lot of people didn't like it. You can watch the complete video if you want by clicking the card, but at one point in the video, I said this. This epilogue closes off any loose ends that there might possibly be. There isn't going to be a book eight. There aren't going to be any more tales about the boy who lived. It's done. It's over. And at the time, 
I really believe that, and a lot of people really believe that, and I think even J.K. Rowling herself really believed that, that the Harry Potter series was effectively done. And indeed, during this time period between 2007 and 2011, there weren't a lot of blips on the Harry Potter radar. Of course, we had the last few movies that still had to be released, and the publication of Tales of Beetle of the Bard, and of course the outing of Albus Dumbledore, but other than that, there really wasn't much more to talk about in the Harry Potter universe. And then in 2011 came Pottermore. J.K. Rowling had always said that the one other thing she really wanted to make for Harry Potter was a Harry Potter encyclopedia, an opportunity for her to write down all of the bits of the Harry Potter universe that she wasn't able to fit into the Harry Potter books. Pottermore was her opportunity to do this, and at first it was a fully interactive website where you actually went through each of the seven Harry Potter stories, looking at illustrated images of each one and finding little hidden nuggets that would tell you certain things about the Harry Potter story, some of it which was original material that was written by J.K. Rowling herself. Now, of course, the Pottermore site is very, very different, but at the time, it kind of maintained that mystery of the Harry Potter series and also the mystery of J.K. Rowling's original website that we loved so much, the, the mystery of it. And even though the site was kind of buggy and didn't always work the way that it was supposed to, I think it did lead to a start of a resurgence in the Harry Potter fandom. And then came 2016, the fifth and the present era of the Harry Potter fandom beyond the epilogue. This year saw the premiere of Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, a new series of stories from the Harry Potter universe with screenplays written by J.K. Rowling herself. And of course, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, which Jesse and I have already talked about. Harry Potter and the Cursed Child wasn't technically written by J.K. Rowling, but she did basically grant her approval to this story as being the next chapter in the Harry Potter series. Effectively, the book eight that none of us thought was ever going to come and some of us didn't feel like should have come. But now there is kind of a resurgence of the Harry Potter fandom. There's a whole new generation of fans discovering the Harry Potter stories. And J.K. Rowling, though she did try to get away from Harry Potter with some other things that she wrote, is now returning full force into the fandom. And I kind of have mixed feelings about that. One of the things that I'm always really concerned about whenever there's a really popular story that comes to a definite end is that the author is going to feel compelled by the fandom to keep making stories, to keep just plugging away at this world until there's very little mystery left and the author has just kind of run out of ideas and is continuing to write things simply out of desperation. Looking at you, Piers Anthony. And I did not want that to be the case with Harry Potter, which is one of the reasons why I didn't have a problem with the epilogue and actually really liked it. It seemed to signal to me that J.K. Rowling was seriously going to step away from Harry Potter and just let the story be. And now it seems like she's kind of gone back on that. Now, the Fantastic Beast stories are one thing, because they are a separate group of stories. They still take place in the Harry Potter universe, but it's a separate group of stories and I'm kind of okay with that. Cursed Child, I'm less okay with. And I still haven't read or seen it, and I actually haven't seen Fantastic Beasts either, so take all of this with a grain of salt, but I still really feel kind of funny about Cursed Child and the popularity that it's gained. And maybe I'm wrong, but it just seems kind of like beating a dead horse. And honestly, I don't know if this is a legitimate concern or criticism, or if this is just the case of an old Harry Potter fan getting lost in his nostalgia and wishing for the good old days of the Harry Potter fandom. This is a non-rhetorical question, by the way. I honestly don't know how to feel about this, and maybe watching Fantastic Beasts or seeing or reading Cursed Child would help me solidify my feelings about this a little bit more. If you have any thoughts about the subject and of us living in this era beyond the epilogue, then I would encourage you to leave them in the comment section below, and maybe I'll gain some insight out of that. But for now, suffice it to say, I still like Harry Potter. I just made a whole video about it on the first day of VEDS. Speaking of VEDS, let me know if you are participating in VEDS this year so I can put links to your channels in the descriptions of my videos for VEDS. I'm really hoping I'm going to be able to make it all the way through VEDS this year. It might be a little bit difficult because of some other lifey things that I've got going on, but I'm really hoping that I'm going to be able to make it work. I'll talk a little bit more about VEDS next time, but until then, friends, neighbors, and fellow VEDSies, I will see you tomorrow.